Is Tiana, and today I am here to tell you about my father. His name is Wang Bing Zhang, and he is a political prisoner currently serving the 16th year of a life sentence for his work in pro-democracy activism. Before he became an activist, my father was a medical doctor, but he became inspired by the ideals of freedom while living in Canada as a PhD student. My father came to believe that the Chinese people. Deserve to live in a democracy ruled by law, and that he could help achieve it. So he gave up his career in medicine, and instead devoted his life to fight for freedom for the Chinese people. For 20 years, my father worked towards his dream of a democratic China. He started a dissident magazine, founded several oppositional organizations, lobbied forward in governments. And traveled the world, giving speeches to inspire people to share in his ideals. In doing so, my father would leave my family, face unthinkable challenges and setbacks, and sacrifice everything, including eventually his own freedom. On June 27, 2002, my father was having lunch with fellow activists in Vietnam when he was kidnapped. Beaten and blindfolded, he was taken back to China by Chinese authorities and arrested. He was charged with espionage and terrorism. He had a one-day trial held behind closed doors, during which my father was not allowed to speak. No evidence was presented or any witnesses called. He was found guilty, sentenced to life in prison, and has been serving his sentence in solitary confinement ever since. I was 13 years old when my father was imprisoned, and when I since when I first set out to try to win his freedom. Since then, I've lobbied, spoken, and pleaded on his behalf around the world. For over a decade, I've continued to meet with government officials, NGOs, journalists, whoever will hear my story to try to win my father's freedom. But despite my best efforts, my father continues to languish in a tiny cell. In southern China, and notwithstanding some of the international support that my family has been able to mobilize, the past decade of my father's imprisonment has been marked largely by heartbreak and defeat. In a country without meaningful rule of law, my family has no means to appeal my father's conviction. The lawyers we've retained on his behalf are routinely in intimidated by Chinese authorities and threatened with disbarment. As a prisoner, my fa father is allowed one 30-minute visit with family every few months. My family takes turns to make the journey from North America, only to see him behind plexiglass and prison bars. The mood is so bleak that even the prison guards monitoring our visits have conveyed to us their sympathy. It's difficult to describe the challenge of trying to lobby for support for his release. From the Canadian and American government in the current political climate, and the helplessness I feel when confronting an adversary as formidable as the Chinese government, it's even harder to talk about my father losing his mind in solitary confinement. The disappointment is overwhelming, and my efforts seem meaningless. And I often ask myself if there's any point in trying, because not only does my father continue to languish in prison. But the human rights situation in China continues to worsen, with more activists being thrown into prison with each passing day. But when I feel like all hope is lost and giving up, this is what I tell myself: I tell myself the truth, and that it is a privilege to be given this mission. Advocating for my father has afforded me the kind of education that you don't get in school. I have the opportunity. To stand on the right side of history, and to make my own small contributions to the advancement of human rights. 
By speaking out for him, I am made better. My life is made richer, and my perspective has been broadened. And for that, I am thankful. Second, I remind myself that I am not alone. Confronting the ever more powerful Chinese government can certainly feel isolating and lonely. But when I meet Falun Gong practitioners, Christian organizers, whole communities of Uyghurs and Tibetans, all working patiently and against tremendous odds to win a small measure of freedom, I am reminded that my father's plight is part of a much larger and more meaningful struggle for basic freedoms, one in which we have many, many allies. And given that these allies are often facing challenges considerably more daunting than my own, I only need to look to them for wisdom, inspiration, and support. Finally, I take comfort in the fact that history tells us that no sacrifice for just causes is wasted, and that progress is a cumulative effort. So while not all of my endeavors will have dramatic results, I believe that they move us in the right direction, perhaps only slightly, perhaps even imperceptibly, but the important thing is that we keep on moving. It may seem naive to believe that one person can make a difference, but we can never know what may come from taking action, and we can be sure that nothing will change from sitting idle. I don't have my father's idealism, his gift for rhetoric, nor his brazen defiance against the Chinese communist regime. Between my aversion for politics and my fear of public speaking, I'm embarrassed to admit how much I still struggle in advocating for his release. But although it's painful and devastating, it is my responsibility to use whatever opportunity I have to tell and retell my father's story. Because even if I cannot secure his release, I have to make sure that his sacrifice was not in vain. The issues that you and I care about might be different, but if my father can endure his suffering and I can stand on this stage, I know that you too can make sacrifices confront your fears, and speak up for truth. Thank you.